hello viewers uh, welcome to today's edition of bdtv sports uh we hope you'll be enjoying our package in the last editions uh today's package we promise you know to be exciting and trading and looking at the activities that happened uh, last night and we want to expect today uh, always with me is my guest uh, Ibrahim Abubakar. Thank you for having me. Too. How are you today? Fine, lovely. Wow, this one you are smiling. It's a very beautiful day outside of Lagos. Oh, wow, wow, wow. Yes. I think you are smiling because of the, what happened last night. And uh, yes, uh, last last night was a very beautiful uh, uh, view. It's, yeah. It shows why many people are following football. So, what of the matches strike you most uh, of what happened? I think it will be the uh, Real Madrid and Dortmund game. Uh, you know, first half losing to Dortmund 2-0, then coming back and showing the stuff of champions. Hmm. Uh, well, but at the time, for me, after the first half 2-0, I was thinking that man is all over for Real Madrid. But two one two quickly goals. I think that made it up as calling the third goal. So what? Where did you think uh, Dortmund got it wrong? I think um, when uh, you know Sain tried to, or when he had to, you know, substitute is top striker, the demand giving uh, Real Madrid a problem and now bringing in defender and they started considering as early as I think 50, 50 something minutes. Uh, it was a, a no brainer, you know, you need to kill off the game, you are playing against Madrid at home. It is not, um, you are not playing in Germany, you are playing in Spain, you know, the fans are there for air and uh, you are already leading to the, this is the type of game where you say, uh, you say Mario, you know, clean it off immediately. You you don't easily come back from it to go to go down. I guess Real Madrid, a, 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 a Mario side, you know. So I think you know, Sain is to to take a, a lesson from that and uh, improve on his squad and the mentality of the team. Wow, you're talking about Mario. There's one thing that Celtic said in after the first half. He said they asked him, so what did you do differently entering the second half? He said, well, you just told this players softly was that you guys. You need to apply more intensity. But again, if you look at the first two goals, they're like costly goals where those guys were not serious. But in the second half, you saw Madrid coming out like wounded lion. And one thing for me is like you said, he spoke with them softly, maturely, or like other managers who just, you know, and the players understood that code and they reacted. Uh, you know, uh, Ancelotti is like a father figure. He necessarily does not even need to, you know, raise his voice, shout at anyone. And he's been with the players, at least more than 90% of them, for over two, three years now. So it's easy for him to know where the lapses are or how to communicate with them and let them know what they are doing wrong. And um, if you if you watch the game yesterday, you see that, uh, I think, what he said, no matter how he, he, he puts it down to them, Worked and um, the, the players, Vinicius stepped up. And we saw even uh, Mbappe was kind of struggling, you know, giving an assist in the first for the first goal. So it it tells about the mentality of, of the team and the fact that they are the uh, current champion of the competition, the Champions League. They need to also show attitude, attitude and show the fact that they have uh, depth in in the squad. Wow, interesting. You mentioned Mbappe. Uh, you mentioned uh, Vinicius. Uh, the poll, you know. You know, a player that is guaranteed to win this US edition of Ballon d'Or. But Asserati said one thing last night. He said yesterday's performance could also put him in pool for next year's uh, uh, Ballon d'Or. Do you agree with him? Yes, I agree totally because if you look at it, what they are doing this 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 year or this season is what will prepare uh -huh. the, the next Ballon d'Or after the one we are expecting uh -huh. this weekend. And then, um, it's all about encompassing your performance, your attitude, your character. He's been bullied, literally racism shouts mm -hmm. and all. But mm -hmm. he's still stepping up. He's still getting the goals, mm -hmm. getting the assists, dribbling past players. So, I think currently he is the best player in Madrid, and one of the best in the La in La Liga, and currently one of the best in the Champions League. So, mm -hmm. I've scored six goals, eight goals in the last six games thereabout. So, he's, he's stepping up and um, he's getting the job done. Okay, let's look at other fixtures. Uh, Arsenal. You know, after losing over the weekend, they, you know, they got to the winning race again. They won over Shakhtar the next. People say that was that was not convincing, but football is about the three points. Yeah, if you look at uh, the opponent Shakhtar the next, in it's, uh, it's not a small play. Uh, Shakhtar is a small team. They were, they are one of the best team in Ukraine. And if you look at the political uh, politics 
playing on, on that side, you also want to look at where they are coming from, the struggle to want to come and play uh, you know, at the top stage and also lay, lay, allow people to see that they have quality stuff to, to, to give to the competition. So they don't want to come to Arsenal's uh, ground and you know play woefully. They also stepped up their game. So the fact that Arsenal had to get a trip on through uh, uh, an own goal shows a lot of uh, character in that Shakhtar Donetsk team. So without taking anything away from Shakhtar Donetsk, they, they, they really give us now around for their money. But my biggest surprise so far in this, this season's Champions League, Aston Villa, they are topping the group. And uh, they won yesterday at home against Bologna. And I'm wondering what is Unai Emery doing differently about that team. I don't know. And so I think the, the, the source in itself in that team is Unai Emery. Like you just mentioned, what are they doing differently? Is Unai Emery, that's what they did differently. Look at what they were, they were, how they were coming from, from last season mm. down to this season. Mm. They, they, they've beaten uh, Bayern Munich this season. So it's not like a, a walkover. They, they are not just, they're not in a team or in a group where they're playing smaller teams. They're playing top teams. Bologna is not small. You talk about Bayern Munich and they beat all these guys. Three games, three point, nine points. Nine points, yeah. yeah. So it's, it's, I think it's kudos to the team That's and true. the fact that uh, they are now coming up as a team and they are very young. If you look at uh, their, yes. from their strike force to the defense mm. and the fact that they have someone who is very experienced. Yes. When I am really in any UEFA competition, you give you your a, an A game with any team. Well, well, I hope they continue with that momentum. Uh, talking about yesterday's game, I don't want that, you know, for me, a lot of fans were not happy. Maybe because of the exit of Mbappe, it's PSG. They keep struggling. Why? So, so many, so so many uh, big teams this season are struggling. But I think what differentiates a big team from the other side is the fact that they have depth and they have attitude. So, if you look at uh, PSG, it took them a while before they could score a goal. I think Hakimi scored the goal, and that's a defender. That's a defender, yes. That's a defender. So the strike force already, even going into the game, they had an issue with their strike force. They, they couldn't start with their main nine. They had to start with another player entirely. And you see, uh, the, I think they'll be looking into January to get one more player, especially in that uh, department. They play good football. They hold on to the ball for a very long time, but they could not get to see the uh, other side of the goalpost. So, they will be looking at uh, improving on that department, I think, and I believe they, they, they will invest in that too. Hmm. Wow, interesting. Uh, tonight, again, there are a lot of matches lined up. Uh, I think the biggest one is Barcelona Bayern Munich. So, on a good day, I'll give it to Bayern Munich. Hmm. But if we, if we look at uh, how it has been coming, a younger team, younger coach, even Bas like ba Bayern Munich now is playing the former coach. You know, as a flick, yeah, and, and, and Barcelona is also a very young team, so I'll just step I'll you know, go into the game with an open mind. Whoever plays very well gives three points, <laughs> it's good. But for me, uh, I'll give it to Bayern Munich. Why would you give it to Bayern? Because again, you mentioned, like uh, Flick said, he said, Well, he understands that uh, Barcelona have struggled with Bayern Munich in the past uh, uh, Champions League fixtures, and again. In 2020, he led uh, by a side that, you know, you know, defeated Barcelona 8-2. And he's saying that that is in the past now, that now that he's in charge of Barcelona, it's like, and again, looking at Barcelona, they top the La Liga table, and they are good, they're in form. They're in form, currently in form. Uh, yeah, Bayern too are in form, fine. But again, a coach with, I don't know, I'm not trying to downplay him, Vincent Company, this is his biggest stage of his coaching career. I'm not saying as a footballer, so I think using this match as a game of, you know, between two managers. Yeah, I think it's more of a game of two managers and also a uh, company trying to prove himself because uh, mm -hmm. going into the season, we I know many people do not even give him the chance to last this long and he's done very well for himself in that uh, Munich team, you know, winning lots of games. And I think they struggle at some point, but they're back. They're also in form. And um, as a flick, we have his uh, work cut out for him, I believe, because then we have quality in that team too. That's for Bayern Munich. Uh, so we're going for Bayern Munich? Yes. Wow. Uh, City up against Sparta. People say it's a walkover. But looking at City, injury to their top players, and they'll be struggling. Do you think it's actually a walkover for them? Too? I, I doubt it's a walkover. So what many do not... Uh, like to talk about is the fact that many of these teams in the Champions League are champions from where they are coming from. 
the Prague team, that's Slavia, Prague, Sparta, Prague, are not workovers. They play good football. They've played Arsenal over time. They've defeated Arsenal over time. They are not there to joke. So, and now you're playing against a depleted Manchester City team. Even though they are dead, <laughs> you, you could look at the fact that they don't have a Rodri and there's no De Bruyne in that team against this uh, Prague side. So, Manchester United, I believe, Manchester City, City should be careful going into the game and not think they are playing against a team that they can just walk over. And so it's not, it's not a walkover, it's for, not Man a walkover City. for Man City. Wow. Man City. Uh, I'll be Lisbon and Liverpool. That's a very tricky game. Uh, Leipzig itself, I uh, have not seen performance as expected this season if you look at their uh, record in, in the Bundesliga. But uh, they're playing against a Liverpool. No, they're doing in Bundesliga. I think they're top two on the table. Uh, yeah. Top two. I think the, the the last time they did anything fantastic was beaten by Oliver uh, Since then they've dropped points at some games, and um, so it's not a walkover. I don't believe Liverpool should be getting all three points against Leipzig. Wow, wow. So Liverpool should. Leipzig are playing at home. Hope you know. So uh, as a matter of fact, I, I believe um, Liverpool has a uh, lot to to prove, especially with the fact that they have a new manager. And um, coming into the season, you saw the type of game they play, the fact that they're no longer trying to depend on Mohamed Salah, and they're trying to build a team, a team around all their, three, uh, their uh, striking departments. So um, Leipzig should be very careful. The Rapid is coming out, for, out of a game where they beat um, Chelsea, so they have the momentum, they have the energy to want to prove another point. Yeah, talking about we have two players and young players tonight. Let's discuss Atlanta. Uh, the one like Lukman, you know, he did well with Atlanta and he referred to the Premier League last season. They are playing Celtic tonight. Uh, do you think uh, Atlanta has a chance of you know getting three points tonight? Yes, yes. I honestly believe Atlanta can and uh, should be getting all three points because they are playing against a, a Scottish side. And uh, if you look at Celtic back at home, they are performing wonderfully well. As a matter of fact, in the top of their, their table, their league, but. They've not they've been woeful you know, in in European in European competition and uh, Atlanta coming from you know winning the Europa Cup and also playing Real Madrid and they've been building on that and another Adi Lukma Ademola Lukma who is currently in form very fit uh, Celtic should be very worried. Our own brother uh, has been ruled out for tonight's game. Uh, talking about that Liverpool, you know, uh, Victor oh, yes. Benefit, he who had an accident over the weekend. I do think his, uh, his exclusion could be a, a, a setback for Bayer Leverkusen against Brest. I honestly doubt that uh, there was a, at a point he was injured and they mm -hmm. had to play games without him and we see players step up. This Ghanaian, I think Fred Pong, uh, Witt and a couple and of those. And Tenor, how are our own brother to Tenor? Tenor. So mm -hmm. they had, like I said, they had the deaths, they, they could go that's well with anything without burning face. Burning face is an addition, it's an extra, it can always help the team. But without him, I believe they, they, they can also get all three points. Hmm. So you are giving it to Bayern, are we? Yeah. I'm giving it to Bayern, are we? 60 70%. Wow, interesting. And what's about uh, this revamp Champions League? It's quite tricky. You know, a lot of people are saying that I don't understand. And as some of the teams playing this, they don't even understand how this thing works. Or like before you are grouped for first two qualify and all of that but, but looking at this one you know 36 teams and the first eight qualifies you know automatically. to quarterfinal automatically then between the 9 to 24 they have to play home and away to book his place for round of 16. so what are is like they have to play more matches and for the big teams who are engaged with other matches do you think this could be a setback for them. That's why you see a team like Aston Villa. Look at the teams that are top Aston Villa, Monaco, Sporting CP, and all of that. Yeah, so um, it will... Although it's early in the day anyway. Yeah, so it will surely show or tell on the, on the fitness of the team. You know, we, we've seen players, top players actually, you know, complain about uh, the number of games that they will be playing this season. I've also seen some, you know, uh, officials of of uh, FIFA and even some coaches talk about how s s players are the ones that shut you know, themselves on the leg where they are demanding for so very much huge money. Yes, they are demanding for huge wages and you don't expect to get huge wages if you're not doing more. <laughs> so <laughs> yes, of course it's return on their, mm -hmm. their fitness and um, of the team and as a player too. And but but if you look at clubs like Manchester City, Real Madrid, Liverpool, they have the debt. 
obviously they will pay much more, uh, much more games because they are winning trophies. Say if you win the Champions League and if you win the Europa Cup, you're coming to play the UEFA Super Cup. Uh-huh. Then, you, if you're the winner of the Champions League, you're going out there to play the uh, FIFA World Club Cup. Uh-huh. So those are, were there before this new introduction. So I believe uh, there should be some sort of compromise and arrangement probably after this season to see how they kind of better uh, the competition. Well, for me, are you okay with this new Champions League format? Uh, I honestly, I honestly believe that uh, the new format has watered down what we know as Champions League because the new format has you know, taken away the away goals mm-hmm. where you have intensity. I want to just come to your home and not defend. Mm-hmm. I want to also score goals. Home and away. Home and away. Yes. If I have two goals uh, away from home, I'm going back home to you know deal with you and finish. But now I could just sit back with us. Consider two goals uh, away, then I'll t- you come back to my place and I'll, I'll deal with you. So I think that what's added it down, and the fact that we're now seeing Aston Villa, Monaco, and the likes on top, above the likes of Madrid, Madrid are just the long term. The top guys are they are not flying. So you see, <laughs> but I believe this is not uh, uh, the, the the real f- uh, face of things. We will get to see champions. By and the end of the year, when we get to not cast and this, and all of that, yes, yes, and all of that. Then we now see, the, we now you know, take out the men from the boys. Wow. Let's quickly go to uh, Europa League. You know, there's a big rivalry between Man U and Moyo. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, yes. Man U and Fanabache, you know, you know Fanabache being tutored by Jose Moyo, former Man U coach. You know, they're playing tomorrow. And there are a lot of the talking points. And Mario have said one thing that, well, for him, he still likes Man. He's not wishing Man you bad. And uh, do you think Mario want to like prove a point? Why, like me, Man you made a mistake sacking him? I don't think he want to prove a point. I know he want to prove a point because if you look at his track record, let's just go as far back as when he left Chelsea for Inter Milan, mm-hmm. and uh, he was playing against Chelsea in the Champions League. Be- that season before the season started, they had uh, some sort of. Uh, Preseason games, friendly games, in time, land Chelsea. Chelsea won. They took it to the Champions League where it really mattered. And we could see what he did at home, San Siro, and playing Chelsea uh, at the Stafford Bridge. Mm-hmm. Home and away. He didn't draw, he didn't draw. He won all games. He got all six points. He knocked Chelsea out. So, yes, he might not be as strong as, uh, Fenerbahce might not be as strong as that in time, land, but I honestly believe he should be getting a point at least from this game tonight. But if you look at two qualities, it's also United and Fenerbahce. I think United have a better squad than Fenerbahce. No, they, they do have a better squad than Fenerbahce. In one of our editions recently, I talked about how they have all their departments covered mm. outside of injury. Mm. The defense, the midfield, even the attack, they brought in one or two players to come and you know, shut that up. And, um, but they've not played as a team this season, mm. which is showing. And, but if you look at individual quality, and compass together, they are a better side on paper than Fenerbahce. Fenerbahce, you could have literally, literally pick out their best players and be like, okay, yes, they have a friend who also played for Manchester United. Yeah, yes, yes, but yes, I think yes. Eddie Zeko, mm. over 34 years old now, so it's a more of an older player team with you know very few young players. And um, but Mourinho today will want, probably want to you know get at least a point. No, he's uh, Mourinho in one of his uh, you know pre match conference, he said that. Uh, United currently they have a better squad and they should be getting better than what they are getting now. And he said that you know, more man you gave to have more favor. Unlike his days, they didn't give him more time. You know, it's like they are saying that Tehag is he should have been sacked before now. A lot of people are still surprised that Tehag is still there. Yeah, so I think uh, uh, Manchester United management are looking at we've sacked so many coaches in the last years. Let's find a way to just stick with one, which uh, is. Probably not looking like a very wise decision at this point because uh, when South left, that's how the swag was when he left. We had a David Moyes, didn't mm-hmm. last. Uh, before then, we now have a uh, Jose Mourinho who okay. came. As a matter of fact, data wise, Mourinho is the best next uh, coach after South. Yeah, yes, yes. So, yes. so but they didn't like him, the English press didn't like him. Yes, I, so I think it's a matter of the English press, former players all being in his business at the team and you know not giving him time enough time to mm-hmm. do what he wants to do and he's won quality trophies too before he left even better than uh, uh eth uh eth has won one or two trophies mm-hmm. but uh he won the Mario won the, 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 the cup won the, the europa league and i think the community should 
if you are counting that as a trophy. So he's done well and um, he's proven himself over time. Mm -hmm. uh, tonight he wants to also prove that. No, uh, Thursday night. Thursday? Yes. Uh, yeah, so I, I believe uh, he wants to also prove that uh, Manchester United made a mistake letting him go. Wow, okay. So let's go back to the home front. Uh, social media went gaga uh, last week, uh, should I say, uh, when the report about uh, Super Bowl players being stranded, you know, and route their, you know, 2025 AFCON qualifiers against Libya. And these have generated a lot of talking points. How can you keep a team for 10 hours? People are saying 15 hours. People are saying, but the truth of the matter is that those guys, you are stranded at Libya airport, you know, and that led to the players boycotting that match. That match. And Kamp has stepped in and said, he found, Kamp found that and I said, okay, they are going to take action and going to sanction, you know, whoever is found wanting. And Libya on their own side said, they too had similar encounter, encounter back home here. That their flights, some of them to you, was, was, you know, they moved them to Port Harcourt. And they have to drive from Port Harcourt to you for the, so in all this mix up, what do you, is it the best for African football and all of that? So, um, personally, from the angle of business, you know it is not wise. Because if you're saying uh, Nigeria did it to me, and then I'm retaliating. So um, it does not bother well in, in, in respect of our continent as, as, as a continent, Africa. You look at uh, Europe, you look at even uh, South America, North mm -hmm. America, they don't do this. In, in America, where they have crazy fans, where they have crazy uh, football uh, uh, mentality, they hardly do stuff like this. Where I want to come to play a qualifying game, and you're keeping me, you know, at your airport for over 15 hours. You, you, you literally be on, uh, on Twitter getting information from uh, Kong Boniface and mm -hmm. likes. Most of them, you, you could see so from the pictures and videos that they uploaded, mm -hmm. how they, they were literally the human. And it's not... Um, it's not a good one for Africa. It's not uh, something you want to look at when you want to say selling point for football in Africa. So it's, it's literally saying that um, if I'm in Nigeria playing, the, let's say, in the, in the MPFL and the uh, Libya club is coming from there, I shouldn't go there because it's, it's as simple as that. If uh, a national team can have this kofu, then what, what, what to say about a player going to play in a club there? And uh, it's, it's does, it doesn't bother. Well. That's just it. It's not a wow. very good one for, for Africa. It's not a good one for Africa. For I quite agree with you. And uh, uh, Patrick Mustafa has vowed to take necessary actions. And I hope this puts an end to any further of those occurrences again because it's not good for our football. And let's quickly let's move away from football and talk about our own brother too, who has been in the news for for like a month since he lost his battle against Daniel uh, Dubois. We're talking about uh, Anthony Joshua. A lot of people have said, boy, go and retire, boy, go and quit, okay, change your coach and all of that. Are you looking at, you know, they are saying all these things, you know, as a result of the, how he lost. He was knocked down, knocked down four times before the final knockout. And it was like, that was his worst defeat in his boxing career. And looking at his age, people are saying that he should go and retire from boxing. That this young guy is 27 years is stronger, is bigger, and people say Joshua at his age that time he retired a lot of heavyweights. Do you do you think Joshua should quit boxing now? Uh, I don't think we, we are in a position to tell him when to quit. Uh, I think his body, his manager, his coach, and probably his uh, fitness team should be the one to give him that, and they have that information. So left to me, I would say he should look inward if he is no longer interested in boxing. He should go for golf. That's where the, the, the guys with the money goes to, you know, when, when they are tired of, you know, doing the big thing that they do. So um, if not physically there, if he's not mentally there, if he needs to see a therapist, if he just anything that works for him, I believe he should do. But personally, I think um, if he wants to continue, he can. We have a see Ronaldo is currently playing in Saudi Arabia. And it's, it's coming good. So if uh, Joshua feels... You can see him you know, go one year, two years more. Let's mm -hmm. let him go at it. It's his career. So we are advising to do the match with Dubias. Because people are saying that Dubias is attracted with the money. Yeah, if if you say so we are we are all in it for the money unless we all we line. If you are playing for the passion, money also has to come. You have to feed your family and all of that. You have to pay the coaches. And um 
if he's interested in the money, at least he should be able to put in the work. He should give us quality fights. He shouldn't be, uh, you know, like a Jessica in, in the ring against his opponent. And uh, 33, I think, I think. 34. 34. We'll be 35 soon. So if he can still give us a year, fine. If he can't, he should mm -hmm. talk with his team and just also, hang his gloves. So you are saying that he has one year or two to box before he call it a day? Uh, I'm saying that uh, he should, you know, talk with his fitness um, team. Mm -hmm. If he wants to go, if he, he has the mentality to kick on, if he has the, the physicality to move, why not? Wow, wow. Thank you so much. It's been a very interesting time talking sport with you. And, uh, well, we'll after this, now we'll move. Maybe in the night for the Champions League, we'll see more football actions and all of that. So which team would you want to watch tonight? Uh, tonight, I'll probably want to go for Manchester City and just sit back. Uh, sit back and watch. Yes. Thank you, Vyar. That's all we can have for you today. I hope to bring you more in the next edition. Thank you.